In 2019, the Great Lakes saw some of the highest water levels on record. Shoreline flooding has been a problem for months. Michigan's western shore has seen some of the worst effects. In partnership with MLive Media Group, we bring you the latest. Mark Torgrosa is the chief meteorologist for the new site MLive, which has covered the effects of the high water throughout 2019 and into 2020. Some parts of the Great Lakes region have had their wettest water year on record. What's a water year? You know, we think of a calendar year, January 1st. Um, some accountants would do physical year. Uh, a water year starts November 1st and it ends the next year, October 31st, because a lot of the snow that we get, November, December, doesn't turn into water into the watershed until it melts sometime in March or April. So we use that late fall precipitation and the snow, November and December, to add on to the water the next year. In much of the Great Lakes Basin, the water year ending in 2019 has been among the wettest on record and it all winds up in the lakes. This year, all of the Great Lakes, except Lake Michigan and Huron, set record high water levels, uh, mostly in the summer. Some of the Great Lakes were at record high levels for several months. Many communities on Michigan's western shore have been hit with erosion and flooding. In Leland, on the Leelanau Peninsula, Fishtown is a collection of historic fishing shanties that's both a tourist destination and a working waterfront. Some of the shanties still house commercial fishing operations. The record high water posed an obvious threat to shanties built on pilings. Two of the shanties, including one that um, houses a, the business called the Village Cheese Shanty. It's a beloved sandwich shop. Water was getting into the business. And then our oldest shanty from 1903 called the Moore Shanty. All last year, it just had water anywhere from this deep to several feet deep in it. The Fishtown Preservation Society a nonprofit that owns the shanties has begun work to protect the most vulnerable structures. We are working in the wintertime to lift those buildings that we lift up out of Fishtown, set you know, back on, on parking lots, and then the foundations will be fixed. The buildings will then be brought back to the exact locations, but they'll be anywhere from 12 to 16 inches higher than they were. In Fishtown and elsewhere, responding to the high water is proving to be expensive. The projects that we're working on, the estimates are at $2.5 million, so there's a lot of fundraising to be done. In Pentwater, persistent flooding caused by the high water forced the closure of Long Bridge Road on May 1st. Tourists and residents had to take a nine-mile detour. Lynn Moore is a reporter with MLive and the Muskegon Chronicle. The village actually implemented its own ferry service using an old naval boat. Um, and that helped in the summer, but they knew that they needed a, lo a longer term solution. And they got pretty creative with a structure they actually uh, referred to as a burrito. On top of the existing road, workers added limestone wrapped in a heavy duty plastic fabric and paved over that with asphalt. And they actually were able to raise that road several feet and it was reopened this fall, but they had to get creative with both of their solutions, the taxi service as well as the burrito road. Fall storms made erosion an even greater concern, especially one that arrived on October 16th, packing winds that approached 60 miles an hour in places. The National Weather Service, NOAA, figures that that was the most destructive storm to the sand dunes of western Michigan uh, since about 1986. And they found a spot where they think that about 30 feet of the sand dune collapsed and went into the lake just in about 12 hours. Seeing that kind of erosion and anticipating more, homeowners were left with few appealing options. The things that people are really turning to to protect their properties are the seawalls, um, either steel seawalls or rock revetments, or moving their structures. As the erosion encroaches closer and closer on their homes, they've had to make some real tough decisions, and they're not cheap. People were getting frantic. Um, they've spent tens of thousands of dollars, even hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, protections, seawall protections for their properties. Corey Morse is one of MLive's photojournalists. He visited one home just north of Holland, Michigan several times. 
The first time, the house's door opened onto a cliff. The second time, things had gotten even worse. The floor had just like fallen out. And you know, it was just, it really was gonna go over the edge. I mean, it already had started to. There was like a debris field down below, not even just like from the house, but like trees that like had been like rooted there and all of a sudden like there, it's falling over. The next time Morse visited, the house had been demolished before erosion could send it tumbling toward the lake. If they hadn't demolished it, it was gonna absolutely go over that, the edge. At least one other lakeshore cottage didn't fare as well. On New Year's Eve 2019, erosion claimed this home near Montague. This was a cottage that's been um, in this family for generations. Um, the woman who actually owns it now um, began um, efforts to save the structure was several months ago. Um, she knew that the beach you know, was being eroded, that the bluff that the home sat on was being eroded. She lives on the other side of the state, so she, she worried about her home, um, but she couldn't, you know, she didn't know how quickly that bluff was eroding um, until um, one evening her neighbor called and said, I'm sorry to tell you your home went off the edge saving the house. Ultimately, it was beyond what she was capable of doing. I mean, it's just amazing like to see a house just literally fall over into the lake. It's quite, quite a sight to, see, to actually see a house go over. Current forecasts don't show lake levels going down anytime soon. Well, we're told by city and state officials that there's no real end in sight with the high water levels, and unfortunately, they can't tell us whether they're gonna recede much at all. Nobody knows what the future holds, and I think that's scary for people as sort of a wait and see sort of proposition. I definitely really feel for them and hope that everybody can hopefully save their houses. I think that there's a lot of uncertainty around here too, like, you know, how high are the water levels gonna get? If the water levels did keep rising, I mean, there's gonna be a lot more um, houses at risk for sure. You know, we're still in a wet pattern. And until the overall hemispheric weather pattern changes and we go back to something drier than normal, we gotta expect the lake levels will continue to go up. It just all depends on how much Mother Nature rains on us. If she continues to do excessive flooding rainfall, we'll see lake levels we haven't seen in modern history. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org. See you out on the lakes.